Hello, everyone. Uh, I think we were in danger of getting squeezed by the BBC there, which is a common experience. Um, I'm John Gapper. I'm business columnist of the FT Weekend. I write the stuff that you flick past on the way to the arts and wine coverage on the weekend. Um, and I'm very pleased, and we're all pleased, I think, to have Lutz Schuler here, uh, a man with a lot on his plate, 100 days since the Virgin O2, Virgin Media O2 merger. So have you solved it all? Yeah, I think um, we have a good start, um, as you say. Well, um, timing is also everything, um, right? I, I think we all know that our networks have kept the country connected uh, during the pandemic. And, and now it's all about uh, rebounding the economy. And um, I think in the perfect timing now, we bring a strong mobile brand, or the strongest mobile brand with the O2, and a 5G network with Virgin Media and the fastest network together. And uh, so I, I, I think it's a power couple. Um, I tell my organization it's the coolest gig to run in Europe, for sure. And we are maybe a bit in honeymoon phase, but, but yes, we came very good off the blocks and, and have an excellent start. So, I mean, you mentioned the pandemic and the whole changes in working patterns, people staying at home, maybe people more working from home more, longer distance commutes and, and wanting the home office. Do you think that's a big, big long-term opportunity or are we going to...? Absolutely. I mean, we will never go back uh, to working five days in an office. I think all of us know that. Um, we have not tested our network for such a usage, right? Nobody has stress tested uh, for more than uh, um, the, the capacity used during the pandemic onto our networks has more than doubled, basically overnight. And um, so, so now it's about, um, in the B2B sector, helping companies to find the right environment uh, that people can still work together while they, they are uh, at home. Um, infinitive opportunities for us. I think, I mean, look, very high level, um, right? And I, I started uh, to work in the connectivity business, in, in the mobile business, actually, uh, back in 94. I haven't learned anything different. And so, so connectivity was always important. But I think we lost a bit our importance because everybody was talking more about the content or the value on top of our networks. And I think now, after the pandemic, we, we have a second chance in life, and um, we want to grab that. And um, yeah, I've been reminded by the very loud hammering in my street recently of, of a new competitor laying some cable down it to try to compete with Virgin and others. Um, but you've only got a limited footprint. You've got to spread out more in the country. You've got to upgrade your network. That's a hugely expensive business, isn't it? And it's going to take some time. Yes. So, so I mean, we have uh, publicly uh, committed that we will be spending uh, 10 billion uh, pounds over the next five years, so a lot of money. Um, I mean, what we are doing is uh, we have increased the speed of our existing network uh, very quickly. So. Over 10 million households are now able to surf at one gig speed. Um, we will have our entire network enabled for one gig end of this year. That means close to 60 million homes. Um, we have announced only 60 days after our merger that we will upgrade our cable network to fiber. Yeah, that was an, a big announcement. And the benefit of that is that you come very quickly and for us, uh, because we, are, we have a ducted network at considerable low cost from one gig speed to 10 gig speed. And then also, uh, we are expanding our network currently at a pace of 400,000 uh, uh, homes a year. Now, we, our mission is upgrading the UK. Our mission is not upgrading half of the UK. Now, if you multiply 400,000 with something like we are looking for eight, nine million homes, that takes you 20 years. So I'm retired in 20 years. People know me, I'm a very impatient person. So therefore, we are looking now for ways to get the funding, you talked about the money, uh, right for these additional seven, eight, nine million homes, and then we will expand also the rollout machine. Okay, let's just talk about 5G, because with mobile, that's becoming part of your responsibilities. Um, 
I'm old enough to remember going through 2G, 3G, 4G, and there's always a lot of promises about how great it's going to be, and then it mysteriously turns out to be slower than it, we were told. Is 5G really going to be different, and is it going to be different for the content providers in this room? I, I, so, so I think 5G has, has a couple of benefits, and um, I, I mean, the, the biggest benefit maybe for the consumer uh, segment is that the latency is is, 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 is very, very uh, 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 low. So, so, so means very fast re response from the network. And out of that, you can build a lot of applications. Um, I think at the moment, if we are all honest, speed for the consumer is already su sufficient. Or? So it's, I mean, uh, in my mind... Well, it is if you're standing in the right place. But that is a question not then of 4G or 5G, that's a question of capacity, right? And I think there's another benefit of 5G. You can deploy capacity much cheaper. And um, you can also, because the network is completely virtualized, you can um, move capacity uh, with a fingertip between uh, base stations. So, so, so you can deploy capacity cheaper, which is then better capacity for customers, lower latency, and then um, on the back of that, I think it's a, it's a ton of opportunities of new uh, applications um, uh, which will happen. Yeah? And uh, so, so therefore, um, I think you need both. You need a fiber network because, right, I mean, what is 5G? It's, a, it's, a, it's an antenna and it brings traffic right, uh, right uh, into the underlying network, so therefore we are rolling out fiber. We have uh, high highways, uh, huge highways, and then obviously uh, have the capacity everywhere, and then work very closely with a lot of new uh, uh, B2B opportunities or B2B2C opportunities um, uh, to, to, to really provide value. Okay. Well, talking about ambition, um, looking at the cable companies in the States, Comcast obviously didn't stop its ambition at infrastructure. It moved into content in a really quite large way, including Sky. Um, do you think, do you ever think to yourself, actually, we've got to go that route? Uh, we're going to have to go that route in the future and become a content provider as so, well? So, so we, we are coming from the other side. Um, our, our clear strategy is superior viewing experience. So we, we, we think we have the best connectivity in the country. This is why we are growing. We combine that with a platform, easy to access, high quality, and then we have every content the customer wants on that platform. And uh, for us, this strategy pays off. And I, I, I don't think that we need exclusive content. Never say never, but I think for, the, uh, for me, what I have on my agenda, I would say no. So you're, a fr you're not just a friend of me, you're a friend to uh, the people in this room. I, I, I absolutely think so, because, um, I mean, look, we, we are an aggregator. And um, so, so, so I think we are working together with all of you. And we, we, we are obviously negotiating uh, deals and sometimes haggling. But uh, we need the content. Um, um, you guys need the platform, you need superior connectivity for your customers. And I think the next thing to come is, and we have all joined forces here, is use the customer data, use all IP, and then, uh, right, I mean, we have a lot of mobile customer uh, relationships now. We have 47 million connections, so more than half of the country. Uh, yet, let's use that together, absolutely. Okay, so you mentioned the word haggling there. Um, I know three years ago, you and ITV were haggling, or uh, uh, Virgin and ITV were haggling really quite a lot about retrans fees and the ITV argument that it should be paid uh, for Virgin to carry the service. It all settled down, and I think you signed a three-year contract. Now, if my maths are right, from 2018 to 2021 is three years. So what happens now? Are you still being pushed by these guys to... So, so uh, the good thing is that you haven't heard anything about us. We, we have prolonged our deal. Ah. And um, we have done exactly what I was talking about. Um, first, understand really what are common opportunities, right? I mean, we, we are all moving to the all IP world. Um, um, advanced advertising, 
um, getting the data from the customer uh, back to production. Um, there, there's so much stuff we can do together. So therefore, my clear view is now, if we would go back and haggle about retransmission fees, what a waste of lifetime. Let's innovate together. If we don't innovate, we will die. If we innovate together, we will create value, and when we create value, we will also compete internationally. Very simple for me. And just on mobile content, um, you know, TikTok has obviously been a huge, a huge thing. Um, I had the privilege of going to Cannes once and listening to Jeff Katzenberg talking about new TV, which became Quibi and then became nothing. Um, uh, how do you think we should think about mobile content or producers, broadcasters, uh, creative people should think about mobile? And is there a real opportunity there? Um, we, we absolutely hope there is an opportunity. I mean, we believe in convergence. You, you see on the connectivity side that people want a, a, a seamless connectivity. And I think something similar is happening on the content side, but people still are differentiating between um, content on the big screen and content on the small screen. And also, it's not only about the content, it's also the way how, how you buy it, right? I, I don't know in your family, but in my family, it's a complete mess, right? Some of... of uh, <laughs> yeah, my family's what... a complete mess, but let's not get into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, only in terms of how you manage your, <laughs> your, your, your apps. Um, but we, we don't have the answer. I mean, we have started now, right, to, to, uh, on the O2 side to, to uh, package Disney Plus uh, with our offers. Uh, we, we got huge success out of that. You see this more and more happening. So, so the question is, um, can we help that our customers who, who have seamless connectivity get also a seamless access to content, and we work with our content partners together in a way that both screens are considered the right way. That, that would be fantastic for us. Am I sitting here and am I having all the answers now? And um, just thinking about the States again, there's been a big trend of cord cutting there, of people just going straight to just having a broadband connection, cutting off the, the cable connection, cable television connection. Uh, and I think one estimate is there might be by the mid 2020s 50 million homes in the States that are like that. That hasn't been such a big trend in Europe. Do you think it's going to come? No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I, I may, maybe because of two reasons. Number one, I think in the States what, what happened there was uh, that you were forced to buy huge TV packages to get to the content you really want and an unbundling with direct-to-consumer has helped customers to really uh, save money. This is not the case here. Um, and I think second thing is, uh, I mean, we, we, we just listened to Tim, right? There's no BBC quality content uh, available in the States like that, uh, free to air. So I think that combination, um, I mean, we, we, we are almost flat with our TV customer base. We will, we will be launching soon our first uh, IPTV offering, uh, targeting more at the younger segment. Maybe it's the other way around for the younger segment, that you start with Netflix, but then you get to the linear content. I think even my children, right? I mean, they watch the Olympics, they watch uh, a lot of sports, they watch also some shows on, on uh, 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 public television. So I think it's a question how you package it. Okay. And final question, um, Ofcom's been quite good to you guys, I think, uh, or it's certainly given you some predictability in terms of wholesale rates and so forth. It's a, and, and we have, as we found out, a very a changing government. Um, is there anything you'd say to the government about the sort of regulatory structure and what a company like yours needs for the future? Yeah, well, um, I, I think still to have one gig everywhere in the UK is, is the target for the government. I think now it, it was turned down to 85%, one gig availability until 2025. We will deliver more than 50% end of this year. Um, so, so that thing is not solved, number one. Number two, as you said, we, huge investments are needed. 
And I think Ofcom's role is, on one hand side, to keep uh, uh, really uh, looking for the customer, the consumer, but also make sure you have an investment-friendly uh, environment. So it's a balancing act, and I, I've seen Melanie, so I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, you will have a view, Melanie, on that. But, but I think, it, and it's also, we should work, to work together on that, right? So, and, and we want to have satisfied customers ourselves. So I think it's good to stay in the conversation. It will be a, a, a balancing act in the future. Um, and I, I mean, it's, 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 it's a bit of a deal, right? So, so there's some certainty for the next decade, and there's billions of our billions invested in this country, which will help all of us. Okay, well, billions invested in this country is a good note to end on. So, Lutz, thanks very much indeed. And next, we're going to have a panel on fake news.